Hello guys. So in this video, I will talk about what do we mean by hyperplane and how we can understand it. And I will also talk about in-depth intuition of the math involved behind the equation of the hyperplane. Okay. So let's get started. First of all, why I am talking about hyperplane in detail? So in machine learning, in case of regression, linear regression tasks or logistic regression task, if we have more than two-dimensional space. Uh, when I say dimensional space, if we have more than two features, we actually try to fit a hyperplane to the data points that we have with us. So it becomes important in order to understand those algorithms and also support vector machine. In order to understand these things, we have to have a proper solid understanding of what do we mean by hyperplane. Okay. So let's get started. So here I have drawn, drawn a two dimensional space and this is a straight line right so this is the the equation of the straight line is given as y is equal to mx plus c correct so what is this m m is slope of a line and c is the y intercept okay so in short in this figure this represents c this is the y intercept and slope is calculated using this particular figure here so this is the slope so what's the angle of alignment towards the x axis of that particular line actually gives us the slope okay so there is one more general form of the straight line equation and that is given as so more general form of the equation is given as ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 so you would have come across this particular equation in your high school okay so this is the more general form of the equation so if you want to correlate it with this particular equation. So, if I just rearrange it, by is equal to minus ax minus c and y is equal to minus ax by b minus c by b, right. So, now if you can correlate it, this minus a by b can be treated as m and this particular c will be minus c by b. So, don't get confused with this c and this c these two are different so i guess you are understanding what i am trying to say here right so this is the more general form of the equation to represent this particular straight line so in this video we will make use of this form of straight line equation in order to proceed further okay so let me just write it again so that is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero Okay, so now let us again go back to two dimensional space. Okay, and represent instead of x and y, let me call it as x1 and x2 coordinate system. Okay, and we will have a straight line here. So now in this case, this particular equation can be written as ax1 plus bx2 plus c is equal to 0 right so just think if we have more than two dimension it will be ax1 plus bx2 plus some other alphabet into x3 plus c is equal to 0 so it goes on and on and on like that so if we have a data set or if we are dealing with the space which is more than 26 dimension this particular a b c d doesn't help us right so, in order to avoid that issue, we will write it in more generic way. So, instead of A, B, C, let me write it as theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus this particular C can be written as theta 0 is equal to 0. So, this is our equation of straight line. Equation of straight line. Okay. So, we can scale this particular thing in any dimensions so if we are dealing with three dimensional space the same equation can be written as theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 plus theta 3 x3 plus theta 0 is equal to 0 right so this is the equation of plane so this is the equation of straight line we call it as a line in two dimensional space in three dimensional space we call it as a plane and as we go above the dimensional spaces more than three dimension 
we will not find any more words to describe it. So, anything above three dimensional, we call it as hyperplane. Okay. So, now for four dimensional, the equation of this particular hyperplane would look like theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 3 x 3 plus theta 4 x 4 plus theta 0 is equal to 0. So, now this is the equation of our hyperplane in four dimensional space. Okay. Now, we can generalize this particular thing for n dimensional space. So, and how we can do that? So, it will be theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 3 x 3 up to theta n x n plus theta 0. This will be the y intercept form if you think of this in a two dimensional space, right? So, this will be the equation of the hyperplane in n dimensional space, okay? So, if this uh, I mean, uh, not if, but this is actually a cumbersome method to write the equation, right? So, let us try to simplify it. So, how we can simplify it? So, in order to simplify it, let us again go back to our two dimensional space, okay? So, now we will go back to our two dimensional space wherein we have our x1 and x2 coordinates, and let us assume that we have a point somewhere here in this particular two dimensional space and this point has the coordinates x1 comma x2 right now if you think of this point as a vector okay so let us represent this vector as x since we are dealing with two dimensional space this vector is of two dimension and when we talk about vectors we actually represent it in a column format. So, this will be x1 and x2. Okay. So, similarly, if we have another dimension here and let us call it as x3, instead of this particular vector of two dimension, we will have a plane here. Right. So, this will be the plane and here we will have again x3. Okay, for this particular point in three dimensional space, we have three values x1, x2, x3. Right. So, in three dimensional space, x can be written as x1, x2, x3. So, this can be scaled to any number of dimensions. Okay. Now, coming back to two dimension. Okay. So, let me quickly undo the stuffs here. So, now in two dimensional space, if we are assuming x as our vector, okay. So, if this is our vector x1 uh, uh, composed of elements x1 and x2, we can think of these thetas also as vectors, correct. So, before going to thetas, again I want to write the equation of the particular line if we are dealing in the 2d space it will be theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 0 is equal to 0 correct now what we have done we have taken this x 1 and x 2 and represented it as capital x and it is a vector x 1 and x 2 right now what i am doing is i am also representing these theta theta 1 theta 2 also as vectors so how i can do that theta is equal to theta 1, theta 2. Okay. So, this is one vector, this is another vector. Right. So, if you think of this as a vector, this equation here, theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 0, right, is equal to 0. So, in this equation, this particular part here, this particular part here is actually a dot product right dot product of two vectors so how you can write the dot product of two vectors theta dot x plus this theta 0 will be as it is right so now we have understood this in terms of two dimensional space correct you can scale this 
into any dimensional space. So, in case of three dimensional space, this theta will be a vector of three elements theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and x will be a vector of three elements x1, x2, and x3. Correct? So, similarly, in n dimensional space, this theta will be a vector of n elements theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, up to theta n. Correct? And this x will be x1, x2, x3, up to xn. Correct? So, no matter in how many dimensional space you want to work with, this particular equation theta dot product x plus theta 0 is equal to 0. So, this holds good. So, this can be the equation of straight line and this can be the equation of hyperplane as well. Okay. So, now if you want to understand dot product in a better way, so what is this dot product? So, theta into x. Now, again coming back to two dimensional space. So, in any way, if we want to understand some concept, we will always scale down to two dimensional space and try to generalize it to the higher dimensional spaces. Okay. So, now again coming back to two dimensional spaces, this theta is theta 1, theta 2. And this x is x1, x2. Okay. And this dot product can be understood in terms of matrix multiplication. And how we can do that? We can say theta transpose matrix multiplication with x matrix. So, this theta transpose x. So, what is this theta transpose x? So, now theta and x, if we are thinking this in terms of matrix, the shape of this are 2, 1. The shape of x is also 2 comma 1. Correct? Okay. Now, what I am doing? I am saying theta transpose x because I am not saying this. This is how the dot product is actually done. Right? Dot product between two vectors is actually a transpose of one vector on other vector. So, this is in turn the projection of this vector on this particular vector x. So, I will talk about this in more detail in my another video. Okay. Let us not worry about that particular thing when, when I said projection. Okay. So, now coming to understand this particular equation theta transpose x. So, if we just rewrite this theta as theta transpose, this will be theta 1 comma theta 2 and x, it will remain as it is x 1 comma x 2. So, what we are doing? We are doing matrix multiplication. So, this is matrix multiplication. So, if you just do the math, it will be theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2. Correct. So, now if you plug this back in this particular equation, we can write it as theta transpose x plus theta 0 is equal to 0. Now, again, we have understood this in terms of 2D. You can expand this understanding and scale this to n dimensional space. n dimensional space. In case of n dimensional space, this theta transpose will look something like this theta 1. Sorry for that theta 2, theta 3 up to theta n and similarly x will be x1, x2, x3 up to xn. Now, you take the matrix multiplication of these things theta transpose x plus theta 0 is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is actually the equation of a hyperplane. Equation of hyperplane. So, in order to further simplify this, what we will do? We will assume assume that in n dimensional space, when I say n dimensional space, it is n dimensional vector space. Vector space. Why vector space? Because we are creating x as our vectors. It is a vector, right? So, in n dimensional vector space, we will assume that the hyperplane always passes through origin, passes through origin. So, in effect, this theta 0 will become 0. So, again, in order to understand this, we will go back to our two dimensional space and equation of a straight line. So, x y this is the equation of our line this is the line y is equal to mx plus c 
So as I told you, this particular part here is a C. So it's a Y intercept where this particular line cuts the Y axis. That's what we call it as Y intercept. So now if this particular line is passing through the origin, this C will be 0. Right? So in effect, in more generic equation of the two dimensional straight line, it can be written as theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 0 is equal to 0. Right? So now if you treat this as x 1, if you treat this as x 2 and this as your theta 0. Okay? Now this theta 0 is 0. So there is no point in having that. So the equation of straight line becomes theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 is equal to 0. In more generic way, it can be written as theta transpose x is equal to 0. Correct? So the same idea will be scaled to n dimensional space. So the final equation of hyperplane, final equation of hyperplane is given as theta transpose x is equal to 0, where we are treating theta and x as vectors and theta transpose x is a dot product. So, you have to remember this, this is very important point. Okay. So, now we have understood this, we will see what this theta is right we know that we have n dimensional space of course i cannot draw this n dimensional space so i will restrict myself to three dimensional space so x1 x2 x3 correct so let us assume we have xn so n dimensional space so combining all those n dimensional space we will try to find a hyperplane something like this just assume this is the n dimensional space and this is our hyperplane formed by these particular coordinate systems x1 x2 x3 okay so since this is a three dimensional space we can generalize this to x n dimensional space okay you might be getting bored by hearing the same thing generalizing the idea and scaling it up but this is how it becomes easy to understand the stuffs. Okay. So please bear with me for that particular statement. Okay. So now coming back to this hyperplane equation, theta transpose x is equal to 0. We know that this is a dot product, right? So theta dot product of x is equal to 0, right? And how we can write this dot product again? Modulus of theta multiplied by modulus of x into cos theta is equal to 0, correct? So, this is actually the equation of dot product, correct? So, when this equation will be equal to 0? When this cos theta will be equal to 0 and this cos theta will be equal to 0 when this theta will be equal to 90 degree and what is this theta? This is the angle, right? So, angle between the vectors. Correct. So, what are the vectors in this case? So, theta is one vector and x is another vector. Okay. So, please do not get confused with this particular angular theta and this particular theta here. So, this particular theta here is a vector of n dimension theta 1, theta 2 up to theta n. Okay. And this theta is just an angle between these two vectors. So, if this is x, if this is theta, so, this is the 90 degree angle that I am talking about here that is theta is equal to 90 degree. Okay. So, what do we mean by this? What do we understand with this particular equation? So, I will just write it again. So, theta x cos theta equal to 0 and we want if we want this equation to be equal to 0, we want this angle to be 90 degree. Right. So, if I draw this between x and theta. So, I will just draw in two dimensional space. Okay. So, this is my x and this is my theta. So, this angle is 
90 degree so this is what this equation is telling us okay so now if you think x as a vector of n dimensional space x1 x2 x3 up to xn so this is not just a single line so it will be a plane of some sort so i cannot obviously draw this and even we cannot even imagine how it would look like so our imagination stops at three dimension because we are restricted to a three dimensional space as a human being we are restricted to a three dimensional space so if you are a higher dimensional living being you can easily assume 4d 5d and so on right but since we are human beings we cannot understand how the fourth dimension looks like and how we can un we can even not imagine how it looks like right so i am just trying to give you a intuition here so this x here will be a plane so all these x points x1 x2 x3 will fall onto this particular x plane of n dimension correct and this particular theta here is perpendicular to this particular vector x so this theta is always perpendicular to x vector okay this is always perpendicular and what is this it's a vector again because we are treating everything as vectors now so i hope i have succeeded in giving you the intuition on what do we mean by hyperplane and what's the equation of hyperplane and in some way i have also tried to explain you guys what this theta actually is and do not get confused by different notations uh, in my videos I, I have tried to be consistent with these particular notations when it comes to thetas so in maybe in some other videos they can be represented as alphas betas or even w's okay so i am trying to use w's in case of neural networks when it comes to machine learning i am sticking to thetas okay so i hope the notations are clear and this concept on hyperplane is also clear so if you like this content please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers who wants to learn this kind of stuff okay so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye